Welcome my friends to a new episode of Frameworks and um, in this episode we're going to talk about teaching literature and um, again I received um, a lot of questions from so many teachers asking me to deliver an episode on teaching literature. So in this episode we're going to talk about um, a list of stages that we can use in order to teach literary texts. Right. And um, I have chosen um, a poem that I love so much. Um, it was written by Andrew Marvel, and it is called To His Coy Mistress, right? So this is the poem um, that I'm going to use as an example in today's um, episode. Now, right, so if we're going to talk about a framework for teaching literature, this framework would not be different from the other frameworks in terms of uh, stage number one. And as usual, we say that stage number one would be leading. And as we said before, in order to come up with a good leading, as a teacher, you need to be well aware of the topic um, of your literary text. So talking about To His Coy Mistress, that's um, a poem by Andrew Marvel, and it's a romantic uh, poem. So the main topic, of course, is love, right? We need to generate students' interest in the topic. So, um, and also we need to activate their schemata. And what we mean by schemata, the background knowledge. Um, and when I, when I say background knowledge, uh, some people might, I'd ask, um, Shadi, what do you mean exactly by background knowledge? Background knowledge is the kind of information we have in our minds about every topic in life. So um, imagine that um, I'm going to talk about restaurants, for example. Um, I can't assume that you have nothing on your mind about restaurants. Of course, you do have um, a lot of information about restaurants. So it's, it's very important for the teacher to activate this background information. So how can we do this? For example, um, as I said, if the topic is about restaurants, you might ask students a question like, um, what is your favorite restaurant? What are the restaurants that are close to where you live? And stuff like that. Right, good. Now, we said that our topic today uh, is a poem by Andrew Marvel, and it is called To His Coy Mistress. So let's see what um, leading I came up with. So there are a couple of questions here. What does this title suggest about the text? What kind of text do you think it will be? Wonderful. So that's the leading and then you ask a student's question and then the answer and then wonderful. Good, right. Now, so after leading, what is the following stage? And the following stage is what we call first contact. Now, why do we call it first contact? Because this is the time when students will see the text for the first time. That's why we call it first contact. And in order to design a good first contact stage, you don't just give the text to students and ask them to read. You need to give them a reason to read the text and make that reason a kind of a gist question, a kind of a main idea question. So uh, what I designed was something like this. Read the text now where your guess is correct. What kind of text do you think it is? So this stage now is based on the previous stage. How? Look at this. In the leading stage, I said, what does this title suggest about the text? What kind of text do you think it will be? Now, in the coming stage, which is the first contact, students will get the answer. But they will get the answer from the text itself. Read the text now, where your guess is correct. What kind of text do you think it is? Now, lovely. So, so the leading stage, and now the first contact stage. What is number three? Number three is a very important stage in teaching literature. We call it the listening stage. Why the listening stage? Because we want students to listen, 
to the literary text. Now, someone might, might ask and say, Shadi, are we going to give them questions to answer when they're listening? And I say, no. And then someone would say, yeah, but wait a minute. We cannot ask students to read or listen without giving them a reason. I say, yeah, but again, with literary text, pleasure can be a very good reason. Simply, why do we read novels? We read novels not because we have an exam, not because we're going to answer some questions. We read novels because we enjoy them. So that's the reason here. We read poetry because we enjoy it. And um, this is uh, the beauty of literature that people read literature because they love it. Yes, of course, yeah, sometimes it's a subject at a school, but originally people in real life read it for pleasure. So now it is very important to have this a stage where students listen to the poem and enjoy it. Think about this when you go to the theatre to watch a play. I mean, you don't have a set of questions to answer. So this is why in this listening stage, it's very important for students to listen and feel the poem. Right. And what I decided to do here with this poem by Andrew Marvel to his coy mistress, I wanted my students to listen to it in the original pronunciation or what we call OP. And we have OP and we have RP. RP is a received pronunciation or some people would call it standard English, which is a kind of modern English, right? OPE is original pronunciation. It's the pronunciation um, that Shakespeare uh, used. It's the pronunciation that Andrew Marvel used. So I wanted my students to get that feeling, that feeling of authenticity, that they're listening to something as it was pronounced in the past by the poet himself. And I'll do my best, right? So let me read it in OPE. Had we but vored enough in time, this kindness lady were no crime. We would sit down and think which were to walk and pass our lone love there. Though by the Indian Ganges side, should this rubies find I by the tide of Amber would complain I would love you ten years before the flood. And you should, if you please, refuse till the conversion of the Jews. Me vegetable love shall crawl vaster than empire and more slow. An hundred years shall go to press the eyes and on the forehead cares an edge at less to every part. And the last stage shall show your art. For lady, you deserve this debt, nor will the love at lower rate. So, as you see, right, oh, pretty much um, different from um, modern English, eh? And, but the beauty of uh, original pronunciation, that um, it shows you how words really rhyme. Because if you read it in modern English, you will discover that some lines don't rhyme, which is which is absolutely ridiculous. Because when you find, you know, two lines that don't rhyme, what does that mean? Andrew Marvel didn't know how to rhyme? Of course not. It means that we're not using the right pronunciation. Because look, for example, look at these two lines. Um, if, if, if we're going to read it in modern English, look at how it will sound. Of Humber would complain I would love you ten years before the flood. Now, how, how, how is that? We have wood and flood. Now, these two don't rhyme, but, but listen to the original pronunciation. Of Humber would complain I would love you ten years before the flood. Now, that makes sense because we have wood and we have flood. So, yeah. Yeah, these to rhyme now. So again, so that's the beauty of that kind of uh, pronunciation here. And this is why I decided to make my students listen to it. It's more interesting also. Lovely. So again, so we talk now about three main stages. Number one is leading. Number two is first contact. 
And we said that in the first contact, try to be ready with a kind of um, a main idea question, a gist question, something like that. After the first contact, we have the listening stage. And in the listening stage, we want students to listen to the poem. We want them to feel it. Now, the fourth stage is what we call response to the text. Now, in this stage, you can have either questions or stem sentences for your students to complete. Questions need to be about your students' feelings about the poem. So you're not going to ask them questions that need answers from the text. You're going to ask them questions about their feelings regarding the whole text. Or stem sentences for your students to complete, but they complete again with their feelings about the text. Look at this example. I don't like the poem because. My favorite line is because. My second favorite line is because. I don't understand this line. And then when they complete these stem sentences, they compare with their partners and they discuss and they give reasons. And then of course, after that, you give feedback. So that's why we call it response to the text. Because you respond to the text with your feelings. And this is very important because we're talking here about literature. And literature does a lot about how we feel. We read a novel, we feel happy. We read a short story, we feel, for example, sad. We read a poem um, because literature affects feelings. That's why it is a very, very important stage here when you're teaching literature. Then from this stage, we come to another stage, which is called closer reading. And now closer reading is about the comprehension of the text, understanding the text. So this is when we're going now to ask them questions that need answers from the text. So let's have um, a look at the questions. Whose voice is speaking in the poem? Who's being addressed? What does the speaker want from his love? What reason does the speaker give to persuade his mistress? How would you describe his tone? Do the tone and message remain constant throughout the lines presented here? So again, these questions need understanding of the text. And that's why we call this a stage closer reading. So if you look at the stages, you will find that they are in harmony. Now, what's after closer reading? Now, after closer reading, we have a stage that we call reconstruction. And in reconstruction, we give the literary text to students. But it will be missing, for example, some nouns or verbs. And usually, maybe, you're going to choose the areas you would focus on later in the coming stage. So look at what I did here. When you look at the way I designed this question, you'll notice that the last word in every line is missing. Rhyming words. So, for example, we have but we but wort in often. So time is missing. And then we have after that this kind is lady or no crime. So crime is missing and like that. So this is how I designed this question. Now, students need to do what in this reconstruction stage? I will ask them to put the poem away so they don't look at the original text. And I will ask them to complete the text from your memories. And then they compare with the partners. They help each other. And then finally, they go back to the original text and they check their answers. And this is what we call the reconstruction stage. Now, after the reconstruction stage, we have the language focus stage. And in this language focus stage, you can focus on any kind of language in the text. You can focus on pronunciation, you can focus on vocabulary, you can focus on grammar, you can focus on functional language, you can focus on this, you name it. 
And I chose in this one to focus on, obviously, pronunciation, because I'm using OPE today, original pronunciation. So let's have a look at my activities. And what I decided to do, I decided that the focus in this stage will be through self-directed discovery, questions that would lead students to the rules or the areas I want them to learn. So question number one here, for example, is how do you pronounce these words in modern English? Words like time, crime, way, day, side, tide, lovely. And if you look at these words, you will find that these are the words that were missing in the reconstruction stage. I took them here and I designed the questions, of course, Normally students will say time, crime, way, day, and they're going to pronounce these. Fine, that's all I want now. Then I'm going to lead them to another question. And the question is, now listen to the poem one more time. Which words are pronounced in OP like RP? Take the right boxes in the following chart. And we have this chart here. So we have the words, and we have in the first column, if the OP, is equal to the RP here and if the OP is different from the RP. So students now will listen to me saying, for example, um, had we but word enough in time? So they will listen to me saying time and say, no, 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 no time. No, that's not the pronunciation we have in RP. In RP we say time, but Shadi is saying time. So, I mean, that is different. So that's what I want. This is, this is what I call self-directed discovery. And of course, I'm going to let them check with the friends. So they go, for example, to um, line number three. We will sit down and think which where. And they go say, wait a minute, where? No, it's, I mean, we say way in uh, modern English, but it's a uh, where? So, no, that is different. So again, that's what I want them to do. And then they discuss together. And then there will be feedback. And I tell them. And, um, and then they will come to the similar ones. So when they say Jews, oh yeah, Jews, that's in OP like RP. And then you've got refuse. It's the same thing. Okay, so only these two. So, and then after that, another activity um, that says, look at the poem with its OP phonetic transcription. Copy the transcription of the following words in this chart. So now they look at the poem with the original pronunciation, as you see, it's transcribed there. Someone might say, Shadi, will, will the students know the transcription? I say, I prepared that lesson for teachers. So this is at the level of teachers, because this is a teacher training video. Um, but however, if you're of course teaching students, no, no, okay, um, you need to be careful with that and you need to check whether they are familiar with the uh, phonetic alphabet or not before you decide to go for such an activity, right? Good. And then, so they go to the word, for example, term, and then they start noticing uh, the phonemic transcription and how it is different, how it's new. Okay, so it's not time, it's tome. So this o, this o, which is a diphthong that used to be part of original pronunciation, but it doesn't exist now uh, in RP charts. Hmm. Then we move after that to question number four. Now check your dictionary and complete the chart with the RP transcription. So now what they're going to do, they're going now to write the OP in one uh, column and along with it there will be the received pronunciation one and this would give them the opportunity to compare and be aware of the differences now then we come to this matching activity match the following RP sounds with their OP equivalents now they have to match so they've got RP and they've got I A O and in the OP, they have O, A, O. Then we have another question, which is practice the previous chart with your teacher. 
and this is a repetition activity where the teacher is going to drill um, these sounds. The, the final questions in the language focus stage is match the following words with the right OP sound, original pronunciation. So they go, for example, to might and they say, oh yeah, it should be pronounced in um, OP, in original pronunciation, not might, it will be might. So they go, for example, to column three and then they go to throw. No, 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 it's not throw in OP, it's throw. And then they take it to the first column and then they go to say. No, it's not say um, in OP, it's say. So, and this is how it happens. Finally, when um, the language focus stage is over, we move to a stage that we call it writing. And of course, in this writing stage, we will ask students to produce something in relation to the topic of the poem. And my idea here was this question reread the previous poem and turn it into a romantic Facebook post. So that's my idea for a writing activity here. And some might say, Shadi, why a Facebook post? Because this is very natural and this is what we do all the time. After the writing stage, we have the last stage, which is listening and speaking. And listening and speaking, my friends, why listening and speaking? They will listen to the teacher, giving them a kind of a model, and then the teacher will ask them to do the same thing. And what I did here was get in five quotes on love, because that's the topic of the poem. It's a romantic poem. And then what I'm going to do, that I'm going to use quote number one. So quote number one goes as follows. I'm selfish, impatient, and a little insecure. I make mistakes, I'm out of control, and at times hard to handle. But if you can't handle me at my worst, then you sure as hell don't deserve me at my best. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to take this first quote, and I'm going to talk about it, and tell my students whether I believe in this or not, or whether these words apply to my personality or not. Then after that, I would say to them, okay, my friends, I want you to do the same with the other four quotes. Discuss these quotes with your partner, see whether you agree or disagree and why. So my friends, if we're going to go through this lesson that I designed on Andrew Marvels to his coy mistress, I would say that stage number one was leading. And after leading, I moved to what we call first contact. And after first contact, we have the stage of listening. And after listening, we have the stage of responding to the text. And after responding to the text, we have the closer reading stage. And after the closer reading stage, we have the reconstruction stage. And after the reconstruction stage, we have the language focus stage. And we said that in the language focus stage, you can focus on pronunciation, vocabulary, grammar, function, discourse, you name it. And after the language focus stage, we have the writing stage. And after the writing stage, we have the listening and speaking stage. So these are the stages of the literature framework. And we can use them with teaching different literary texts, not only poems, but they can be used with any literature text. But of course, you need to be wise about how long the text you'll be using in your lesson with your students. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed uh, this lesson. This was a framework for teaching literature. Thank you so much, my friends. Bye bye.